Hi everyone, welcome to my poster presentation. I'm Arian Kamatek, a PhD student from Zoll Group at EMBL. Let us start with a little background. Since most of the genetic variations are in the non-coding regulatory region and the effect of environmental influences are very hard to measure, it's very important to use predictive regulatory models. For this, we propose a framework for building a unified unbiased regulatory network using cell type and condition specific edges and also using a universal benchmarking strategy. First, the GRN reconstruction you can see in the left panel. The network has three types of nodes, transcription factor, regulatory elements and gene. These are connected by two types of connections, uh, TF to peak and also peak to gene connection. The key point of our approach is that we integrate these two types of connections, uh, which infer from the multiple complementary methods and construct an unbiased unified regulatory network. The network is based on the data from cohort of paired ataxic ionistic samples of at least 20 individuals. In the next phase, uh, we suggest a novel benchmark based on predicting cell type specific expression respond to um, perturbation using gene regulatory network. Briefly, we train a random forest model to learn the coefficient for each transcription factor in predicting differential expression uh, for all genes. In the last phase, we are using the prediction model and not only using it to evaluate performance of the GRN, but using it as a benchmarking tool to compare our GRN with other GRNs. Here is a Phase 1 of our method, we use the Hokomoko version 11 and search for transcription factor binding site with an ataxic peak. Then using this T, uh, using a TF expression, we can compute correlation between transcription factor and each ataxic across the individual. We can also compute FDR for this correlation and based on a specific threshold for correlation and FDR, we can filter these connections. We also assign peak to gene connection based on their distance and correlation. With these steps, we can construct a TF gene, a gene regulatory network. In the next phase, we are using constructed GRN and also RNA-seq data from two different conditions. First, we calculate differential expression, then we construct a relation matrix based on the GRN. By relation matrix, I mean the connection between transcription factor and genes inside the matrix. Next, we apply a random forest regression on the actual and random simulation matrix in order to predict differential expression values. After optimizing some of the parameters from GRN construction, we use this model to compute important TF. Finally, we are testing also our model with a completely independent test data set. Here are some part of the results. In the left panel, we have a phase 1 uh, GRN construction for 132 RNA and ataxic samples for CD4 plus naive T cell. As you can see, uh, we have around 180 transcription factors and around 3020 genes with more than one, uh, 12,000 connections. Uh, in, in a part B, it shows peak. Uh, it's a uh, it's a QC plot, and it shows the peak genes positive correlated are more than negative correlated. And if more signal in the negative than in the positive correlation, then QC would fail. And finally, in the in the part C, we have more links in real network versus permuted network, as expected. Uh, in the right panel, uh, we have a result from phase two. In the part A, you can see our. R square for predicting differential expression between REST and LTS stimulated naive CD4 plus T cell using real versus random network. And it shows the actual network performing much better. In the part B, we optimize TF peak and peak gene FDR threshold, which are some of the GRN construction parameters based on their prediction performance. And in the next part, we tested the specificity of the naive GRN with testing it against other CD4 plus cell type. As you can see, only naive differential expression can be predicted by naive GRN. For part D, we compared our GRN with another TF peak gene network based on peak gene available data from roadmap and also TF peak connection based on DNA's method. In the last plot, we compared the performance of the G performance of GRN based on different data on subtype of the AML on two top type of the AML and resting versus a stimulate naive CD4 plus T cell. And you can see only the cell type specific network is predicted. And uh, as a conclusion, uh, I can say evaluation model shows the real TF gene connections has been captured by our GRN. And then uh, more importantly, our GRN are cell type specific as an evidence by the fact that they cannot learn differential expression for other cell types. And also for each specific cell type GRN, uh, 
a small number of the transcription factor are more important than others which can be more uh, can be further investigated and also we can construct the GRM based on them and this GRM would be more powerful thanks for your listening I would be very happy to share more detail with you during the poster sessions